So, uh, yeah, here today representing Mario Gloria, she was unable to be with us today. Uh, and we're going to be telling you what we have been doing for the last year regarding the micro, uh, the built environment, and spanning all these different range of organizations. Uh, so, Mario Gloria assembled this group. We are uh, come from five different professions and six different institutions. And we spent almost a full month in Amazon doing some, I hope you'll find interesting research. Uh, so uh, we all know that we have been repeated a lot to do the last couple of days that microbes are everywhere. And, uh, and, and we have been uh, very uh, concerned about how the physical aspects of the houses, right, and the structure of those houses, materials and the environment that they create um, affect uh, the human microbiome and also the microbiome inside these houses. Uh, so uh, the main goal of our research work uh, is going to be how westernization uh, has affected those microbial communities across different cultures. So the concept that is, 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 is important for the work we're doing is the concept of transculturation. And that will be the gravel modifications that in, through which uh, subjects will incorporate uh, elements from another culture. Uh, in this case, uh, we're going to be studying a series of cultures that have been affected by uh, a dominant Western culture. So uh, there are two expeditions. Uh, the one that we went to uh, was in 2012, but the prequel to our work was in 2011, when Maria Gloria went to Peru to this very tiny, tiny town that is over there, it's called Chichero. Chichero is about 20 houses, uh, about 80 people. And uh, if you open those uh, coordinates up there in uh, Google Map, you're going to do something like this. This is where we were. Uh, so uh, one of those uh, yellowish spots, that's Chechena. And uh, we went there after a couple of days of traveling through the river. And that time around, Maria Gloria took samples in uh, Chechena, but also three other places, in two in Peru, the Colcoro and Mendras and Circunza, and, uh, and they use uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico as a control group. Uh, the, that time around, she was taking samples of gut, hand, forearm, uh, uh, mouth, and feet of the people. And uh, the, the methods that she followed uh, the, 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 the samples were taken, uh, they were sequenced out using 16S, and uh, then um, they used uh, Illumina, and finally they used Chime for visualizing all the information they got from in the very first trip. And here you have some of the results. Uh, these are the results for the gut microbiome. Uh, as you can see here, and this is something that uh, somehow helped Maria Gloria to uh, envision that it was needed to go back and do some more research regarding how the environment was affecting microbiome. These, uh, the blue line over here in these uh, rarefaction curves show, show Puerto Rico. Uh, the red and orange lines over here they show uh, Chichera and a, a, a spot that is pretty close nearby that is called Coro uh, Yeah. So here you can see this is uh, the cluster of uh, Chichera, this is the cluster of Puerto Rico, and you can see the differences in between. Uh, the difference is uh, significant, particularly after 3,500 sequences is uh, way uh, above uh, P of 0.03. Uh, when we compare uh, skin microbiota, uh, the similarity, the, the differences are also not as small, uh, not as much as we saw with gut though, but uh, still we can see uh, the cluster separate from each other. So uh, based on all this, and um, now Marie Gloria knowing that the, 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 probably there was a relationship uh, worth to be explored, she organized a second group that is the one that we belong to that went down to the Amazon in 2012. This time around, what she envisioned was a research that was going to take us basically through a series of towns across the Amazon. We started in Chichera, then moved to Puerto Almendros, that was one of the towns that she had sampled before, then in Quitos, and finally Manaus. The idea is that one each time we move to one of those towns moving uh, west towards east, we were getting into an upper level of uh, of complexity, uh, culturally speaking of. Uh, so as, as I show you, just, just as a reference, that was Chichera, just for you to get an idea of uh, which types of town we were visiting. This is Portland Mendros, this is Iquitos, and we finally went to Manaus. 
so it's, it's pretty obvious the difference. And on the scale of the cities we were, we were traveling to and the effect that that, that was having in the local environment. Uh, the way in which the research was uh, designed, we were taking microbiology samples. Uh, uh, we uh, were taking also environmental samples regarding temperature, humidity, light, CO2, CO. And uh, my part was, when you click on focus over here, I was taking all the information regarding architecture. We asked builds of the houses, so we had all the information to virtually then afterwards reconstruct all, all the spaces we were sampling. So uh, regarding the houses, we were sampling four different spaces on each house. This is a floor plan of a house in Chicherta. This is a house in Manaus. So uh, we were trying to, we were sampling uh, in the uh, rooms of the houses. We were, we were sampling the dormitory. In each case, we were sampling the wall, the floor, in this case, uh, the mattress or whatever the mattress was covered with. And we were trying to find the equivalent on the other places we were visiting. In this case, for example, in Chichera, they have uh, regular bed, uh, it was uh, it looked more like a table. Uh, people would sleep over there, so we were sampling the equivalent uh, space to that in that house. Same for the living room, the kitchen, and for those cases in which we didn't have an equivalent space, I mean, in this case, we were taking any sample. Uh, in some others, we were sampling this is restroom, so we were sampling entries in the case of formal mentors. Regarding the human samples, we're similarly to the previous study, we're taking samples of mouth, gut, hand, forearm, and feet. This time around, we visited a total of 37 uh, houses. The way in which we get into the houses was pretty much by availability. It wasn't that easy. So people willing to collaborate, we were, we went to their houses and crashing there for two hours, like massively collecting information. I think it's going to tell you more about all the environmental. Uh, uh, sample that we were taking. So we sampled a total of 150 people, 37 houses, uh, for almost 500 objects that includes uh, cups, uh, walls, uh, dirt on the floor, and 34 pets. Uh, Regarding architecture, we have some preliminary results. That's what we're going to be showing to you uh, now. Uh, we still don't have the microbiological information regarding this. We are in the process of getting it. So hopefully next time around, if we get to see each other, we will be telling you a little more about those connections. But regarding architecture, what we have done so far is that we're taking, we're debriefing that information we collected. Uh, we have started to build 3D models of all the houses. and. We are uh, trying to relate all these measurements we have done of the houses. Uh, let me show you just a few. This is uh, the surf, uh, how the surface of the house, the area of the house, has changes across the different towns that we visited. Uh, this difference in between the three towns regarding that surface is not really significant from the statistical point of view. However, you can see that variability changes a lot when we go up the ladder. We are in Chichero over here. Houses tend to be similar, very similar to each other. Regarding uh, the density of the house, that means the amount of people per square meter, in this case, as we, which we cal we're calculating it, it goes down. And in this case, it's, it's significantly different from point of a statistical point of view. It's a, it's, it's a very low P uh, from one place to the other. Same for this and another index that uh, we define that had to do with what we call privacy. Uh, and, and we created that index based on the number of rooms that the house has, how, how separate the spaces are, and the amount of people in the house. And we can see that privacy increases also when we move from this one town to each other. When we put these two uh, dance measurements together in, in this <laughs> one uh, representation, we can clearly see how different are the values, for example, for Manaus over here, that is the, the most uh, culturized place that we went uh, for the four, compared to Chicherta down here. Uh, why is this information important? Uh, we think that uh, the way in which people subdivide spaces, the way in which they use them, uh, how they uh, group inside these spaces, how they interact, most likely is going to be affecting both their own microbiome and the microbiome that we're going to be getting from the walls of the houses, the objects we use, etc. 
So uh, this is another example of how changes from culture to culture is so we were sampling materials, as I was saying, I mean materials of the built environment, but also the objects that they use. And uh, here you have a comparison in between three of the towns. We don't have Manaus here, but you can see how, for example, uh, well, materials that are related to natural elements get down once we go up in these towns. But we start to get more uh, Process materials, like process materials, and also, again, variability increases dramatically when we move, move, we move towards the west. Uh, I will hand it to uh, Tim. Sure. So, uh, in the next uh, few minutes, I'm going to talk about uh, environmental parameters which we collect with. Uh, so, um, this was a very challenging task, actually, because uh, uh, we wanted to sample many houses and we wanted to collect uh, as many as possible data uh, in two hours. So that's something which I would consider crazy <laughs> if I didn't have to do it. Uh, and uh, uh, the, it was a challenge and uh, we took it and uh, uh, we said, okay, we're going to do the best we can. And uh, selection of environmental parameters uh, uh, which uh, we decided to collect uh, uh, is uh, a compromise in between uh, what we wanted and what we could considering these harsh conditions uh, uh, of traveling from uh, one location to the other and uh, also pretty much uh, uh, harsh environmental conditions for experimentations. So uh, we uh, believe that we did a good job uh, selecting these parameters and uh, uh, collecting as many as possible. We do that by adding pretty much uh, data monitors and collecting data, practically using these two hours mostly to launch our monitors and uh, collect data over a period of 24 to 48 hours. And uh, these are here parameters which we collected, uh, uh, like classified in three groups. However, if I need to single one, uh, which is relevant for this project, I will put the uh, air exchange rate. Uh, the uh, variable which uh, talks about uh, connection between indoor and outdoor environment. Uh, so, uh, that's also a parameter which is more difficult to measure, uh, considering uh, that it depends on the wind direction, that depends on the uh, uh, temperature, and it very pretty much if I measure it three times, I'm going to get three different numbers. So, uh, and that's why I didn't put the really precise numbers here. Uh, it was more like characterizing the houses. And uh, you can see uh, pretty much uh, looking from this uh, uh, middle of jungle village to pretty much some kind of a cottage and very modern uh, style house in, in uh, Manaus in Brazil. Uh, if we exclude two houses in Manaus, all these houses have a huge ventilation rate. We're talking about uh, uh, from uh, 100 to 25 air changes. Uh, uh, or, and, and the difference in between the numbers here, you can see that that means if you seal the house completely, or if you open it, because pretty much none of this house uh, uh, have uh, architecture which we consider uh, here in, in, in the United States, because pretty much out of this, except if you exclude two houses, none of them has a window which you can close. They have shutters, they have uh, 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 sun and rain protections, and these houses are open. And in that sense, even this modern house is more close to this Porto, Porto Mendes house uh, than to the uh, one house which we consider here in the US when air exchange rate is something between uh, point, around 0.25 to 1. So uh, in that sense, uh, uh, pretty much uh, these houses are heavily ventilated and uh, whatever you have outside, you have inside. Uh, that, that's visible here on temperature, uh, considering temperature uh, uh, distribution. Black line represents uh, oscillation of other temperature while these uh, colorful lines are uh, measure temperature in the indoor environment, and you can see that the uh, indoor temperature swings a lot because practically what they're using, they're using their natural ventilation for, for air conditioning. And uh, 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 so that's uh, uh, just as a reference uh, variation, if you use air conditioning here uh, in the United States, uh, active uh, variation is in the range of plus minus one degree, uh, depending on the set point, around the set point. So, uh, the next variable which I will point out is relative humidity, and uh, relative humidity uh, should be always considered together with temperature, at least if you're considering indoor uh, environment. And that's why I'm going to show results in psychometric chart. Uh, so. And I'm going to show you one case here when uh, I'm pointing out first what you can see in, in, in houses 
such as uh, the one in Austin, Texas. Here, uh, just for those who are not very familiar with the psychometric chart, uh, you have uh, uh, air temperature on x-axis, y-axis is uh, uh, absolute humidity, while relative humidities are these curved lines here, so pretty much 100%, 0%. And uh, I'm pointing out this example of a uh, house in Texas, Austin, just to show you how, how clusters are the data. For example, this data here, uh, those are set point temperatures, air, for the summer conditions and winter conditions. So you have a small variation, depends where you measure it, for example, in the set point, in the room with the, set, the thermostat or somewhere else. So in the environment, it doesn't vary a lot, at least considering temperature. However, if you look relative humidity, uh, depending on the conditions of outer air, so these are outer air conditions. Even in Austin, which we consider very hot and we don't have very cold climate, these outer conditions vary significantly. And relative humidity, if it's going to be here or here, depends heavily uh, what's the outer condition. So we have relatively large variation of relative humidity, uh, which is seasonal variation. Uh, if you compare this to the house uh, which we see in, in Manaus, I would like to first point out what's the temperature. So this is outer air condition. So you can see that uh, uh, pretty much their, their climate is defining what's going, go, going to be inside. And even if you look in the conditions, it's really, really very narrow area. So pretty much all, all over the year. So and we measured pretty much a few points here, which is pretty much good representations of what you can see there over the whole year. So, uh, if you look, uh, what is the consequence? So, relative humidity is high. We never saw anything less than 70%, and we saw 100% most of the time, uh, especially after rain, because it was raining a lot, at least in, in jungle. So, uh, what we also, one of the consequences for microbiome, especially those on the humans, is that skin is going to be wet, much wetter than you would see here. Uh, we, we also measured actually uh, surface or at least clothing uh, relative humidity using some personal samples and that's something which we're going to show in one of the following presentations. However, uh, if you look uh, what you would expect this, maybe some condensation. However, the houses which didn't have air conditioning didn't have any moisture problem because practically whatever you have outside it was inside and there was a very small chance to have uh, a condensation because there was no air conditioning. We saw actually in, in problems of moisture problems, condensation problems, only in those houses when we have air conditioning. And they, they do the worst thing. They do, they turn on the air conditioning at night, cool down completely, then they shut it in, in the morning and open everything. And then they, you have a bath, nice, on every surface. So uh, I, I'm not sure that that's one interesting point which, which I took as, as a, so either you take it or you don't take it, <laughs> air conditioning. So, uh, moisture content, since the, this, this, there was no a lot of variation, relative humidity was somewhere around 80% on average to 90%. Moisture content in all materials which we measured, and I don't give a numbers here because we didn't use a really good one, uh, but it was high. I would say very close to saturation point. And that will definitely affect uh, 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 microbiome on surfaces. And I, 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 we, we saw that also that in, in jungle, they have to replace those wooden structures very, very often, because they don't last a lot. So uh, one parameter which may or may not affect uh, microbiome is CO. However, uh, since we know that, uh, uh, I knew that uh, uh, we all have open flame, so I couldn't resist, so I said we're going to measure it, uh, one way or the other, just to see what the exposure. And uh, uh, you can see here that uh, it varies a lot. First, if the house is open, like this one here, uh, uh, you have a huge variation of, of the wind. The, the Porto Amandos, that cottage, has smaller variation because actually it protects it from the wind. However, what's interesting point is that thanks to this high ventilation rates, pretty much they're passing EPA standard, even with this heavy smoke, uh, pretty much uh, conditions. <laughs> so just, just as, a, as, a, as a consequence of this high ventilation rate, which means confirm. Particle concentration, we definitely, that, that affects uh, uh, microbiome and how we distribute pretty much uh, this uh, microbiome in the environment. And uh, again, we were aware that we, we just scanned in, in, in two days, one day, what are the particle concentration. And that's why I'm not showing absolute values. 
So we, we use our particle measurements to characterize the houses. So looking, for example, what are the sources? And uh, uh, here on this slide, I'm showing you uh, variation between in measured inside and outside. And that ratio is telling me where the particles are coming from. And you can see in, in this chat in that village, everything is coming mostly from indoor. Not everything, but uh, indoor particle matters are dominant. Uh, and it's obvious. So this is the floor surface of the house. And you can see pretty much uh, that uh, uh, air is, is one of the high weight for the, for the, for the uh, particulate matters and uh, most probably uh, pretty much uh, biological materials. And you can see, like in, in, in our houses, uh, particle concentration increase is associated with human activity. Pretty much as soon as people get back in their houses, uh, you can see a significant increase. What's the PT? Uh, the number of particles per, per centimeter cubic. So this is a number of counters. And again, you can see in some other days, in some other house, significantly different concentrations based on the floor surface. But uh, pretty much the point is that uh, sources are humans. Uh, if you look at uh, concentration uh, in, in, some ha in a house in, in, in a more urban environment, you can see that this ratio for small particles uh, is going down, which means that now we have probably impact of uh, uh, other particulate matters getting inside, and uh, uh, it, when, you, when you actually pay attention to how heavy traffic is in those uh, uh, cities, uh, you can explain pretty much uh, uh, this increase of other particle concentrations, pretty much which penetrates pretty much in the environment. So again, uh, we can continue further, but uh, I would like to send, show uh, one more variable which we measured, uh, which may and may not maybe affect uh, uh, microbiome. That's uh, sunlight. Uh, this is outer concentration, and this one here is uh, indoor. Oh, sorry, intensity measured in lux. And pay attention, this scale here is logarithmic. So we have 200 times decrease of uh, sunlight uh, in indoor environment. And uh, that means that uh, pretty much this house, even this cottage house, was very dark. And uh, if you compare, for example, this Chacheta village to Manaus, uh, a modern Brazilian city, you can see a little bit of increase. You can see the diversity in architecture, which uh, uh, pretty much gives it this amount, how, how bright are our houses. But the variation is not so significant. And uh, you can see here trend that uh, with uh, more modern house, we bring more light. And, uh, before we start pulling correlations in between uh, sunlight, which penetrates in the house, and uh, UV radiation, uh, we have to also pay attention to the fact that uh, some houses have no glass, others have glass, and now we have to put uh, transmissivity for UV, UV radiation. But even before we go there, I'd like to point out that first we need to look at our data and see what, we, what, what, what is about conclu general conclusion that approximately less than 1% of sunlight is hitting our surfaces. And before, if we translate it to UV light, the question is, does UV light, 1% of UV light, of other air change anything? And I'm pointing out this just uh, to, to, as an as example, that we should very carefully interpret our data before we put it in a, in a metadata base. Uh, so I, I suggest to filter out many of these parameters before we put uh, uh, in, in, in a, a corresponding metadata base. And we are doing that, pretty much figuring out which data have meaningful results, which doesn't, in order to prevent misuse. Uh, pretty much this is uh, uh, what we show you in these few slides are uh, architectural and uh, uh, environmental parameters. The major fun of data processing is coming when you have uh, biological data and when you're trying to, when they're going to use pretty much this data to try to explain uh, some of the findings using biosampling results. Uh, this is not the end of the project, uh, it's an ongoing project. Uh, uh, Maria Gloria, uh, Umberto, and Valeska, a uh, new member, uh, uh, are going back uh, probably in a month mm -hmm. and uh, ready for new. Uh, 19th century adventure. Uh, 
and uh, they, 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 they're going there to collect uh, uh, behavioral and uh, dietary uh, uh, factors which might affect uh, uh, microbiome. So pretty much it's going to be addition to our uh, architectural environmental biodata and uh, uh, pretty much uh, uh, explain even better what is going on in those houses. So uh, I would like to stop here, acknowledge our funding source, uh, our host, uh, which uh, pretty much are more responsible for this uh, uh, project. Thank you.